My name is Gustavo Marquez. Uh, I'm the seventh child of 12. Uh, born in close to Guadalajara, Jalisco, in a little town called San Pedrito Tlaquepaque in Guadalajara, Jalisco. My name is Cesar Marquez. I'm the first generation Mexican-American son of two hardworking immigrants. I've seen my parents toil to give me better than they had my whole life, and I've lived the results of that work from the day I was born to now. I'm also a part of the first generation of my family to go to college. I will soon be joining the ranks of men in my family that work to give their sons and daughters a better life than they had, and I'm proud. It's been an honor to know and work for a man like my father, and it's every son's job to be proud of their old man, but he makes it easy for me. We've loaded ourselves up at our office and we're headed to Los Brisas, one of our favorite restaurants, owned by our good friends Gustavo and Vicky Marquez. And I'm excited to eat some good Mexican food today. He's got the best Mexican food in the world. And believe me, I've ate all over the world. Hello, Gustavo. How are you doing? Good. Yeah. Good. Good for like <laughs> Ready for some good food? No, te asustes, Andres. No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, bring me some tomatillo sauce, please. Okay. Two of my favorites. Thank you. So, Gustavo, I remember you told me this was one of your mom's famous recipes here. Yes, yes sir. Yes, You've sir. had this. We've known each other for 16 Thank years. You. Yes, sir. You've had this for 16 years. A long time ago, yeah. Has anything changed? Pretty much it's still the same, the same, you know. We just add a little bit of cilantro <laughs> and onions. Is your mom too. doing good? She's doing pretty good. She's very, very happy. So this is a great presentation. You know how much I love your food here. Thank you, sir. Um, I love everything on the menu. I've tried everything on the menu. Like I said, we've known each other for 16 years. I've been your guinea pig on a lot of dishes. So, you know, we're great friends. We see each other all the time. We never get a chance to sit down and visit over a meal. So mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to enjoy breaking bread with you today. Yes, sir. Appreciate so we're gonna break bread today. Mm -hmm. But I got a few questions for you. Yes, sir. You know, we talk all the time, but we never get in depth. I know your dad used, used to, before he passed away, owned a um, avocado farm in mm -hmm. Mexico. Mm -hmm. But what, what, what was it like growing up in Mexico? I was growing up in Mexico. Uh... My childhood, uh, uh, we always worked since I was little. I remember uh, 
selling guns with my brother in the streets in Mexico. You know, he, he take a, we win and buy a box, uh, take it in a credit. They keep it credit and then we win and sell those uh, little four package guns in the streets and then we make double the box and then we come back and pay the box and then and, uh, and get another one that, that we can make a little bit of money, uh, you know, with uh, with two children and, ho and home and that's not, you know, they don't give you money to, to, to spend so we have to figure it out the way to, to, to make some money. I live in Mexico until, until I was 14. Come to the States like uh, three months after 15. Uh, that was a good journey right there. Before we come to the States, we uh, uh, me and my brother, we flip a coin to decide who's gonna try to come to the States be, uh, for first time. So uh, he win the first uh, the, 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 the the coin the, the flip of the coin and and, and he he become he was the first one to to, to come my uh, year older brother Cristobal uh, anyway he he wins so so he come to the state to United States before me and then uh, my turn come like three months after that uh, back in '97 around October of 97. I remember because my 15th birthday it was in uh, California. We come through to start work in California. Uh, I remember the first check we get. Uh, my brother and myself and my dad, we put the money together to to, to uh, put the application to, to legalize all my brothers and sisters, the rest of the family, you know, my younger brothers from me to the bottom, all the way down into uh, back in that time it was uh, from from 18 and to 12 year old kids. So uh, they the first check we we get pay we put it into a uh, immigration lawyer to 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 fix everybody. So what made, what was your desire? Why did you get into the restaurant business? That was, uh, uh, it, it, it was like, uh, uh, pretty much, oh man, how we get them? Restaurant business, it, it was, uh, they, they, they called me one day down in Madison, uh, Tennessee. And they, uh, they they asked me if I want to be, you know, uh, waiting tables. Mm -hmm. And then, well, I take it, you know, in, in, in the beginning, but I only, I only work with the uh, Spanish people, you know, uh, because my English was not where they need to be. So I start there and then we work my way up to, to Mississippi. And I, and I find the opportunity to, 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 to run a restaurant in it. So you actually started out working in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. So you kind of lear learned from the ground floor up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here, here, here we are in California again. Uh, eh, things, you know, same time, California only work in fields, you know, it, you don't make much money, you know, it's, just, it's not enough for you to, to, to make a living, uh, especially for young people. Uh, we, after that, we, I went back to, 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 to Wisconsin and I, I just don't find my place in there. And I, I have a friend over in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, and he, he say, hey, if when you need it, you know anything, you you can come over. So here I come to to Nashville. I remember get to Nashville with uh, uh, thirty five cents only to make a phone call. That's all I have, thirty five cents to make a phone call. And 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 I was worried the answer machine gonna answer and they're gonna take my my thirty five cents or fifty cents, whatever the the phone calls. That's all the money I have in Nashville when I come to Nashville. Lucky me. Uh, uh, my friend Miguel Guzman uh, uh, 
answer to me, you know, and, and, and here I am and he say, hey, do you have something to spend? You have some money? Or the, no, no, I'm, I'm broke. You know, I was broke, 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 you know. Uh, I was 18 when I come to Nashville and with the 50 cents in Nashville. Somehow I start working and, you know, they, my friend put me to, you know, to work in, in a book factory and uh, a little bit of everything, you know, in a restaurant and all. And uh, they, one day uh, somebody called me, if you can come and help in a, a taqueria, you know, a taqueria is more where you uh, serve the, the Spanish community, the Mexicans, you know, and all that. Uh, and uh, I, fe I found a friend in it and, you know, I started, you know, uh, liking it a little better, you know, because I, I, that time I don't speak any English, so it was a lot easy, a lot more easy for me to speak in Spanish, you know, with the, with the customers. We start there. I met my wife right there, my lovely wife, Mirna Vicky, uh, and you know, uh, it's kind of the, the 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 journey right there when we when I met her, you know. It, Things start getting, uh, uh, when you fa fell in love, you, you start thinking a little more wisely, you know, what are you gonna do about your life? Basically, like a year later, me and her, we, we, we start living together. And I call my, I remember calling my dad and I tell him, dad, hey, I think I, take, I, I bring my uh, girlfriend to live with me. And he say, oh, you party is over. And I think he was right, you know, party was over for me, you know, no more party, no more, no more crazy around. I remember, you know, that back in that time, it was opportunity. Uh, but that time we, we become to, you know, I moved to, to Mississippi and it, it's uh, opportunity show up where uh, I can run a place, you know, where I can be a manager running a place and I know I don't have any school to 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 go and, and do something, you know, and make make some money to live. So I I I made myself uh, learn the, the the way to to you know to run a restaurant and and and, and uh, then in Ripley, I remember we we come in and I live in a mobile home. And I, t and I uh, you know uh, Vicky praying and and and. and and me talking in a, in a porch in a mobile home right there and I tell her what, that day, uh, one day we're gonna be having a bunch of restaurants and, and, and we're gonna employ a lot of people. Uh, you know, in that time, she, she looked at me like, oh, you crazy. But at the same time, she believes what I was telling her, you know. How did you get to Malden and where was your first Los Brisas? You just throw a dart at the map and say, I'm going to Malden, Missouri. Yeah. When, when we start the restaurant business, we start uh, in, in Osceola. I, when we brought the family to the States, you know, all my, from me behind down, it's another seven, another seven of my brothers and sisters. So they fixed the legal situation to come to the States. And my, uh, I tell my dad about, you know, let's, let's open a restaurant. And I, think, I was thinking I, would, mm -hmm. I already know how to open one, but of course I was don't know nothing about that. And uh, he put uh, all we have in Mexico on risk to open our first restaurant in Osceola. And then uh, it was a, a very, very risky move for for us, because we don't know what it, you know if, we, if mm -hmm. it's gonna work or not. After that, like a year later, my dad come to the Boot Hill and take bring myself and my brother and drew me around here, you know. 
J Highway, a cosa, and that time I don't know what is J Highway or Campbell or Holcomb or any of the little towns. Uh, like two years after we opened in Osceola, like a year, like a year or year and a half. Uh, my, by that time, you know, so we, they were already established. I was, I was still working in, in, in uh, Ripley, Mississippi, running the place over there. And one day, my dad uh, drove us to uh, through the Malden area. You know, at that time, I don't know what is Malden or, or what is Bernie or what is Risco or what is Campbell or, or not a single place. So that day, he, he, he came in and, and, and showed us the place. He, have a, a, he, he was having a heart attack, a stroke. Uh, we lost him in, a, in, in the middle of uh, the cornfield for almost 35 minutes or 40 minutes. He was not coming out. He was coughing blood, and we was, don't know he was having a, 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 a you know, heart attack. Thinking about, my, uh, about that, yeah. Uh, in the beginning, me and my dad, we we we, we uh, make a sh shortcut. Or how you, you know, when you put two wires, that's uh, he, he, you know, he always uh, we we fight a lot, but the same we always become to agreement. Where you know, where we he always meet me in the middle. Uh, that's you know. That was my dad and me about that. Uh, and he somehow he, he come out and he's, we dropped to, you know, torch 25 and we dropped to business 25 and he, he asked me, he's still sweating cold, you know, sick. He was sick. He said, what are you like in this town? And I tell him, anywhere you want to, we can make it happen in, in here in town. Uh, Here's a gentleman, uh, here's my dad, uh, like 60 year old, maybe in that time he was 58 or 60, around 60. Uh, Try to, to, to close a business, he, he's not speaking a single uh, word of English because he don't speak any English. And uh, he was, uh, uh, here is another uh, uh, American, uh, Mr. Ronnie, a good friend, uh, try to, 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 to to make a business, you know, he don't speak any English and he don't speak any Spanish, and somehow they become to agreement, and then and we become, you know, to 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 come and mold and to start working and molding. Uh, you know, I, I I can say, you know, when when after that and. I can talk about, you know, how many people directly and indirectly uh, is being helped uh, for, for this restaurant for, and for these places, you know. If you guys thinking, well, as, what, what Las Brisas has been doing in these 16 years? And a lot of families, you know, they, they, they already become part of the communities where they live, you know, they well known. You know, directly we open like 11 restaurants. Indirectly, not, nothing to do with Las Brisas, but uh, knowing the people who work for us and they go open their own restaurant, I think we're talking about around 30 restaurants, you know, knowing the people who work for us and now they, they have their own restaurant. Uh, that's, where the, that's how they come become through, you know, whether I tell Vicky about we're gonna be uh, have a bunch of restaurants and we're going to employ in a lot of people. That the deal to employ people is not because I want to be the boss. The employing people is to, to keep them a, a, a better future. Uh, uh, you know, to have a better life in, in the United States. We, you know, and, and uh, I think we've been accomplished a lot. Uh, we still have a lot to do. And, A sister told me the other day, uh, 
man, why you, you have everybody in your pocket, you know, because mm. I was gonna say, you know, it's not, I want to have them in my pocket. It's, if I was living in Mexico, I would have been doing the same thing I'm doing in the States. Mm -hmm. But I'm not there. I'm, you know, if I was there, I, I was doing, I will, will do the same thing I was doing over here. Uh, I'm live here, my children live here. So if you part of my community, need help, uh, I'll be the first one to jump on it. And I think that's the key to your success, don't you, Gustavo? Because anytime there's a need in a community, and when I say community, I mean Southeast Missouri. Yes, I remember Gideon had the tornadoes recently and you were the first one to show up and start serving food. Yes, sir. So you did a great job supporting all the communities around here. I could give you a hundred different instances where you were there for the community. I think that's the key to your success. What are some more keys to your success? So, I mean, I've, I've watched you from afar for 16 years now. I mean, I've seen Vicky. Vicky worked here every day when mm -hmm. you all first yes, opened beginning. up. Yes, yes. And she's the best salesperson I've ever seen. She always asks somebody if they want cheese dip after they place their yes. order. So mm -hmm. you've got your crew constantly upselling. Yes. And that's the key to making money. Yes, sir. And when you're in sales and service, is giving great service and great sales and great food. Great food, yeah. So what are some keys to your success? Work. Work hard. Uh, uh, willing to... When someone come in and, and, and eat with me, uh, I like to serve them. We're here to do a service, okay? If they come, I want not to keep the glory to me, you know? If we, I like to do my best for them, to that way they can glorify God. Mm -hmm. You know, if they have good meal after hard day you work, they can, uh, you know, they, 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 they deserve a good meal and, and, and to be served because they already served their, their their people, so now is my turn to serve them, uh, and serve them like a, like a, you serving God is a kid for everything, because you not I'm not serving you. You know, I, I want you not thinking, oh, that Gustavo did it. Nah, nah. You're gonna say, oh, thanks God for this good meal, and and and, and keep it going. You know. Like I say, this is not about money, this is about family. This is about, uh, you know, it's, it, yeah, you, you need to pay bills, of course you need to pay bills. You need to make sure you, you, you pay your own bills, but uh, what I learned in this is God always provide, always provide. Uh, even in the hardest times, you know, He always provides, you know. Uh, if you ask me how, how we start business, man, I, uh, we start, we, how we been doing all this, you know, with a bunch of restaurants. Uh, in the beginning, I tell you, because it was me, oh, me, all over me. Uh, but my dad always say, no, this is not uh, because us. This is some, some something us. You know, American dream is about work. That's, a, that's American dream, you know, you tell me, and you ask people, welcome to the American dream. What is the American dream? Work every day, uh, not stopping, not stopping. Uh, when you become to stop a little bit, it's because you already accomplished your American dream. You know, when you start to slow down and start thinking, okay, you know, I already worked my butt so much. So that's when you start slow, slowing down and you say, that's the, my, the American dream right there. You know, when. When you put your kids in college, when you start sending your kids to college, when they finish high school, when they you wanna you know, but it will come through if you wanna if you want if you want to if you really want to you have to be thinking uh, out of the box you know thinking uh, like I say and that day you know be, before I, we they always started a talk about employing a bunch of people and 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 and, and, and make it work. But if you don't have that thinking, you know, if you only think, oh, I only gonna have a, a two dogs and a cat, you only have gonna have two dogs and a cat. That's all you gonna have. If you ask for a, a bunch of dogs and a bunch of cats, you gonna have a bunch of dogs and a bunch of cats. But you have to 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 to, to put it in your mind. Mm -hmm.